Good afternoon everyone, this is Bremster, and today I'm coming to you with a puzzle called Ceiling Fan by Full Deck and Missing a Few Cards. Um, kind of looking forward to this one, it's been sitting in the queue a while because I don't like oversaturating the channel with puzzles from the same people or of the same type. Literally most of the puzzles I'm getting at the moment have the German Whispers constraint in it and Full Deck and Missing a Few Cards of course appear on the channel as guest solvers quite a bit. They're involved with the Sudoku U series and I do a few puzzles from them. But I can only do the submissions I get and most of the puzzle being submitted are German Whispers and the Sudoku U series comes in and Full Deck are missing a few cards send me, actually they don't send me most of the puzzles, they send me like a, an occasional puzzle. Um, they are setting like a puzzle, they've been setting almost a puzzle a day for a couple of months over on their, um, on their website which I will try and remember to link below. Uh, if I don't and you're looking for it, then post a comment and I'll update the description. But um, the if, if you think that I'm posting too many puzzles of a particular type, either submit or recommend puzzles of other types. That's the way to get it done. So if you think there's too many German whispers, find puzzles that aren't German whisper puzzles and submit them to me as recommend, uh, submissions or recommendations and then I can look at those. The whole what the, the best way for you to see puzzles that you think uh, would be good features is recommend them. That's that's the way to go. Um, I know that means that you're not seeing a puzzle that you haven't seen before but it is a really good way of uh, getting puzzles seen on the channel. If I had more people recommending, literally I see have the same three or four people recommending most of the time, um, then it would really help the channel. I think the amount of variety and everything would go up. Um, we'll see how it goes. Um, as for <laughs> me doing it, it's really hard for me to do it because in order for me to go hunting for puzzles, then I'm doing a lot less blind solving. Um, and uh, I mean, I'm happy to not blind solve for the channel. I'm happy to bring you puzzles that I've solved before, but I don't, I'm, I don't want to do it all the time. So anyway, let's have a look at Ceiling Fan by Full Deck and Missing a Few Cards. So on this puzzle, we have normal Sudoku rule supply. So in every box, in every row, and in every column, the digits one to nine must be placed without repetition. We have German Whispers. So adjacent digits connected by a green line must have a difference of at least five. So these two digits will be at least five apart. These two digits will be at least five apart or five different, um, and crop key pairs. So cell separated by a black dot will be in a one to two ratio, or one will be double the other. Cell separated by a white dot must be consecutive, have a difference of one. Um, not all dots are, are given, that's what the crop key pairs means. It would be perfectly fine for this to be three, four, or three, two, or three, six even, that would be fine. I'm going to restart the puzzle to restart my timer. Let's give this a shot. Now, the important thing we can start with in box five is we can put a five into the middle of the grid because you can never put a five onto a German whisper line because there is no digit between one and nine that is five or more apart for, um, from five or more apart from five. Um, if you, five minus five is zero or less, five plus five is 10 or higher, does not work. So the five cannot go on any of the cells with a line. This must be consecutive with five, so it's four or six. Now, four or six are also very interesting German whisper digits because they each only have one German whisper partner. Um, because six, the only digit that is five away from six between one and nine, seven, um, <laughs> Let's do this another way first. Once a digit, you cannot put five on a German whisper line. Every digit that goes onto a German whisper line must either be below five or above five, just by definition. Any digit that is below five cannot go next to another digit below five because you're working with the digits one, two, three, and four, and they're all too close to each other. They're not five apart from each other. The same with six, seven, eight, nine. So you can never have two digits, either below five or above five, of the same type next to each other. So you're always going to alternate below five, above five, below five, above five, or higher high, low, high, low, <clears throat> as we call it. Now, four and six can only have a single partner. The only digit that is below five that is um, five away from six is one. The only digit above five that is five away from four is nine. So if this is four, these are both nine. And if this is six, these are both one. So this is a one nine pair. Now, if this is one or nine, this is two or eight. And eight only has two partners. Is that right? No, that's not tr not correct. Eight could be next to eight could be next to one, two, or three. So I'm actually not sure how this is going to go. 
I can't put, th oh, I can't put three in any of those. Three is on this dot. So this is two, three, or four. This is two. So these are both low. These are all low. These are low because where, wherever I put the three, it is going to be consecutive with two or four. So these are low digits. So because of the alternating polarity, those are high, those are low. That's very, that's a very cool and quite simple opening, but very, very nifty. These are high. This is low. But because this is high, that's the eight, that's the nine, that's the four, that's the nine. And I can do the high, low along here. These are low. This is, well, this isn't the four, but this is one, two, or three. There must be a six in this row. And I could have looked at this earlier as well. There must be a six and a four in this row. Right, I can do the same in this column. Where is the six in this row now? It can't be here. This is seven, eight, or nine. It can't be a nine. This is seven or eight. If this was a seven, this would be one, two, and that would be three. I think that's okay. But six has to be in one of those two. And the six can only go next to a one, which is true, because this is one, two, or three, and I can't put one there. So that's all good. Oh, this can't be the four, because four can't go next to eight. This isn't the four. This is a two, three pair. There is a one in one of those two. This is a six or a seven. But one can't go there, because that is consecutive with six or seven. This is the one, which is the low digit. This is the other high digit. This is a six, seven pair. That's really cool. These are both low digits. This is a high digit. These are six, seven, and nine, and I can't put six in the middle because six only has a single partner. If I put six here, both of those would have to be one. If I put six here, both of those would have to be one. Blatantly not possible. This is the six. This is the seven. I could have got that from the bo box logic, I think, because if that was the six, I'd need a one there, and I don't have it. The seven can't go next to the three. That's the two. That's the three. I take the two out of those. So these are six, seven, and eight, and I'm not sure yet, but these are all one, two, three, four, and I can't put four, well, six can only go next to one, so I can take one out of all of those, and I can take four out of there. Why do I have one, two, three in there? Because Or four, because I typed it badly. I selected that digit when I shouldn't have, but that's the situation I am in right now. Okay. Now, if this is seven, this is one, two. If this is, oh, this can't be the seven. because Right. Yeah, if this was the seven, this would need to be one, two, and it can't be. That's the nine. That's the seven. That's the two, two. And I, that means that's the three and that's the four because I can't put four there. That's a really cool piece. Now, hmm. Oh, there's a three in the box like a jack in the box. That's the one, which means that's the three. Three can only go next to eight and nine, which means I can take eight out of there. That's the seven and that's the six. That's a really cool opening. Now, how do I get out of these corners? That's an interesting question. Can I tell anything about these lines? And this is where it's going to become interesting. These ceiling fan blades are going to be the interesting thing. If this is a low digit, it must be a four. Now, every black dot must contain a low digit and an even digit. So there must be a low digit on each black dot. Now, how am I going to break into this puzzle? There's a six and a seven down here by Sudoku. Actually, this is just one, six, seven. I can't put one in here. I can't put six. This is one, six. Oh, there's roping going on. So one, six, seven can't go here, here. One, six, seven can't go here. This is one, six, seven. So this has to be eight, nine because I can't put eight, nine down here. Yeah, this is eight, nine, which means this is the high digit. The roping is what's going to give it to me. This is eight, nine. So we still alternate. This, every second digit becomes high. These are high. These are now low. So this is a four because it can't be one, two, or three, and it must be low, which means that's a nine. These are low digits, two, three, or four. That can't be a two. If this is a three, this is a six. If this is a four, this is a two or an eight. The nine makes this eight and this nine, which puts nine down here. But I know what these three digits are. These are 
two, four, and five, and I can't put five on a German whisper. So that's low. Every second digit along the line is low. Every other digit is high. This is a high digit, which isn't a seven or a nine, so it's a six or an eight. But this digit is now important because that must also be a six or an eight because <clears throat> you can never put a high odd digit on a German whisper line because the ratios would either be something and a half or something way over 10. So this is a six or an eight, which means this is a three or a four because six only goes with three and eight only goes with four, which means I've got a three, four pair and that becomes a two. This is a low digit. So that's a run of low digits. That's a three, four pair. That's a two. So that is not a two. So this is a six, eight pair. That is a high digit. So I've got six, eight. This is a seven. Seven cannot go next to four. That's the two and two comes out of those. But the three, four pair means this is the five and that's the four, meaning that's the blue digit. Four. Actually, I'm not sure. But this is a one or a two. This can't be a six. Six would mean both of those have to be one. This is the eight. This is the four. This is the six. This is the three. Three can only go next to eight or nine. They're the only things that are five or more away. That's the eight. This is one, two, or three. That's an eight. That could be a three. Hmm. This... This can't contain low, a low digit. This cannot be a low digit. If this was a low digit, it would have to be a one, a two, or a three. Yeah, this is a high digit. That's beautiful. This is a high digit. If this was low, it couldn't be four. So it would have to be one, two, or three. If it was one, two, or three, it would have to go next to another one, two, or three, because I couldn't use a four. Those would all be one, two, or three, and all I'd have four digits that would have to be from one, two, or three. So this is a high digit. So every second digit along the line is a high digit. Every other digit on the line is a low digit. That is no longer a one. This being a six or a seven means this is a one or a two. By the way, the one, oh, this digit sees one, four, and three. So that's the two. This is the one. This is not the one. This is the one. And that is a high digit. This is very cool. This is not eight or nine. So this is six or seven. And it cannot be six, even though it's next to a one, because that would make that the one. This is the seven. So this is six or eight, which means it is a high digit. This is now six or eight. And it can't be a six because it would be next to a two, and they are too close. <clears throat> Pardon me. This is the eight. This is the six, which means this is the seven and this is the six. And that is permitted. This is two or three because, it, oh, this sees one, three and four. That's the two, which I could have got from looking at the seven. There's multiple ways of looking at these. And now those are high digits because these are two steps away from each other on the line. So they have to be the same polarity polarity being high or low. But if they were both low, what would they be? Because I've already used one, two, and three in the column. So those are both high, which means that's high because it's alternating along the line and those become all low. Now, this is already C67, so this is eight or nine, and you can never put nine on a black dot because the ratios would be four and a half or 18, and I can't make that work. So this is an eight, which means this is a four, which means that is a low digit. These are from one, two, three, and cool. They must contain a two because of Sudoku. This can't be one or three, so it's two or four. This is a low digit, by the way. Oh, roping. This is two, four, five and has been for a very long time. There is no two or four there. That's the five. And this is the two, four, which is the other low digit. There is a five in one of those two. Now, this is a high digit. So it's six or eight. It's a six. That's a one. And I think that's OK. There's a five in one of those two. Okay, looking for the next clue that will break this puzzle open. There's a four in one of those two. I can't put a three. So there's a three in one of those two. So three has to go in one of these. Can't put three in those. And if I put three in here, there's no three in this box. So this is the three, which means this isn't the six. It's the eight. Which I could have got by Sudoku, but I didn't. 
I'm getting there other ways. One is in one of those two. Oh, this is a one, four pair because one and four can't go in those cells and these ones are already full. So those are the low digits. These are five and seven and there's a seven looking up. That's the five, that's the seven, which is a high digit. Uh, okay. So this the triples are one, four and six. And there must be a six in them. Hmm. These are one, two, oh, there's no, oh, right. These are one, two, three, and five, but I can't put one or two in here. So this is one and two, and this is three and five. There you go. And the three is looking up, making that the five and that the three, which is the low digit. And the one looks up, making that the two and that the one, which looks down, making that the four and that the two, which looks down, making that's not the four, that's the four, which is a low digit. I now have one, two, three, four. That can't be a one or a four. So that's the six, which is a high digit. That is not the six. This is a one and a four, which is a low digit. It's a one because it can't be a four. That's the two. The one looks up from here, which makes that the four and that the one. And by the way, I sometimes do this because I often move my selected cell around using my numeric keypad. If you're at the edge of a grid and you move off the edge of the grid, um, Sudoku pad will scroll it to the other end. So if you ever see me do that, that's what's happening. These are six, eight, and nine, which are all high digits. There's no eight there. Oh, there's no nine in either of those. That's the nine. This is a six, eight pair. So we know what these are. One, two, three, four, five and seven. So this is the five and this is the seven. Seven, of course, being high. This isn't the five. For the row, this is the one, which is a low digit. And this is the six, which is a high digit. This is good fun. I like this puzzle. This is five and nine, which I'm not sure how to resolve. This is five or nine. These are three, five, nine. There's no nine here. So it's got to be this box that does something. Three is in one of those two. Five is in one of those two. Six is in one of those two. Seven. Ah, this is a five, seven pair. Right, five and seven, five and seven. This is five, seven. So that's not the six. This is the six. This is the three. I am going to get rid of all the coloring right now. The three looks down, making this the five, which makes this the nine and this the three. That's three in the corner. The nine looks across, making that five and that nine. I'm not going to sing, but I am going to call it out sometimes when I see it. That makes that five and that seven. And the eight looks across, making that the six and that the eight. And 15 minutes and three seconds with full explanation. But it was... A full deck explanation. I don't think, I don't know. I am not going to get into a competition about who explains puzzles better. Please don't leave comments below, at least on that. Um, that was a lot of fun. I enjoyed Ceiling Fan. I mean, I've just got my air conditioner on because it's still very hot here in Melbourne. That was good fun. I enjoyed it. Um, thank you for the puzzle. That was a nice little weekend jaunt. Not that it's the weekend here yet, but um, I will be releasing this puzzle on the weekend. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed the puzzle please submit and recommend. Um, it is the best way for me to get content to do on the channel. If you've got puzzles that you really, really love and you would like me to do, check out my submission guidelines below. And as always, good luck with your solving.